Hello everybody, my name is Pedro, um, aka S. Der Kompressorschrauber. Welcome to my channel and the very first video I'm really speaking because before I was just working, showing what I'm doing and um, yeah, no big words. Um, I asked a lot of people on Instagram, should I do a video about air compressors, how they work, um, the tips and tricks, the purpose, how to use them and everybody was screaming immediately yes 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 you should do a video and then i did the biggest mistake i asked in german or in english sure you voted for english anyways um today i'm trying to introduce you my small friend here this is a small three horsepower piston compressor oil lubricated and um i want to speak about the differences, the uses, the parts, how this thing is working at all. So, stay tuned. So, first of all, we are starting with the main compressor unit. Air filter, head, air outlet, cylinder. Inside of the cylinder is the piston. Between head and cylinder, there are the valve plates. Inlet side, outlet side. This is the crank housing filled with oil, so the compressor is going to be lubricated when it's working. Simple system, works like a four-stroke engine, just without ignition. And the only difference is we are pulling air inside here, compressing it in the compressor unit and pushing it out through this pressure pipe. Here, this aluminum pipe, this is the main pressure pipe. This is a small overpressure valve in case that something is not working as it should be so the pressure can come out here from this valve so um, the air is going through this aluminum pipe straight into the air tank let me show you from the other side so pressure pipe check valve the air can go into the air tank but can't come back into the pressure pipe means when the compressor stops and starts again we are unloading this pipe, so it's pressureless and the compressor is not starting against pressure in this pipe. means it's easier for him to start up. It's a small engine, it's like three horsepowers. If here would be a pressure, it could be the compressor would start to stuck and to struggle really starting work. So, um, this unloader valve pipe is coming into the unloader valve here on the back of the pressure switch. The pressure switch has a start and a stopping pressure. Means we're working, for example, in Germany with bar, in USA with PSI. Um, usually these compressors are working on eight bars to 10 bars, or just have a look about between 110 to 140 PSI. If we set the compressor to work from 6 to 8 bars, for example, the compressor starts, if the, if the pressure drops under 6 bars, the pressure switch switches the motor on and the compressor starts to work. If we reach the pressure 8 bars, for example, he is stopping the motor, opening the valve and we are depressurizing this aluminum hose. So this is really simple nothing special this is safety valve in case that something happens to the pressure switch and the compressor won't switch off before we get a major problem the safety valve has a pressure from i think it's set it on 11 bars or we just have a look this should be like about 160 psi it's going to open to depressurize the vessel or the air tank so nothing can happen um, pretty simple system we switch it off we switch it on that's it there's not much more to say about an air compressor this is the main pressure gauge that shows us the compressor pressure in the air tank and this little pressure minimizer here has an extra pressure gauge so you can set which pressure do you want on the air outlet for example you're using an air nailer 
that needs about six bars and not more you can put the setting on six bars and it will never be more or an air gun or uh, like some kind of spray painting gun or something like this every tool has usually a pressure that is best for use um, usually in every manual um, pretty simple system I don't think there's much more to say about this thing so let's speak about maintenance we don't have to do a lot on these compressors the air filter here's a screw open it up this is a simple air filter change it or clean it so this thing is going to breathe well oil it's like in your car check the oil change it yearly doesn't matter if you have more or less running hours simply change it yearly you're on the safe side that's like half a liter costs a couple bucks this is not really much and this small buddy will be really thankful for every single bit of maintenance now we are coming to a really important part the air tank the air tank is a welded steel tank when your compressor is working he's pulling all the air around you inside and compress it to this tank it's not only air it's also humidity so if a compressor is working and working and working you should sometime from time to time drain your air tank because it's full of water we do have here a small ball wave ball valve um yeah pretty simple open it you can do it in you can do it pressurized or depressurized some i do it always pressurized i put safety glasses on and maybe a hose to um, drain it nice it can be it's not only water it can be also a couple drops of oil and like rust because there's a blank tank inside it's rusting so because of this it's so important to drain the tank from time to time the more often you drain it the less the tank will rust inside and um, a really 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 important thing about this air tanks very important topic what I want to say as well is about this air tanks never never ever weld an air tank by yourself because they're people they learned how to weld an air tank this is a pressure tank if you are starting to weld around or it's some kind of brackets or you're changing the compressor on top and putting another compressor and you're starting to, to, to weld plates or brackets on this compressor can be you are hurting the material if an air tank like this is going to burst or to explode believe me this is not funny you're building yourself a proper bomb so if you are not a suicide bomber please never ever ever weld an air tank by yourself they are professionals or damn this thing cost doesn't cost very much buy a new one but don't do it really this is i'm begging you don't weld air tanks um yeah final summation air compressors oil free oil lubricated um there is not a, a wrong compressor there is only the wrong compressor for the wrong purpose if you are nailing with your compressor with air guns or, or nailing guns you can buy a small compressor 25 liter tank two horsepower this is far enough the common air compressors that uh, roofers are using, they're even smaller, they fit into Thanos boxes. Um, this one is a 50 liter, 3 horsepower, standard compressor for, for home workers. Um, I'm pretty happy about it, I like to work with it. If you are starting to do bigger stuff, like for example, big paint jobs, not airbrush, paint jobs, with a big uh, spray gun, you should buy a bigger compressor at least 100 liters tank and um, maybe four horsepowers would be really better from horse from four horsepowers more um, the thing about air compressors is it's like with cars the engine can't be big enough so means um, you can also drive a car with 300 horsepowers smooth with 35 miles an hour yeah it's chillier than with a 35 horsepower car to force it down the street this means if you have the possibility to buy yourself a bit 
bigger air compressor, it's never wrong. Choose wisely. Ask the guy that is telling this stuff, he can tell you honest, you are telling him the purpose, what do you need it for, and he can tell you which compressor you need. If you have the space and the money, buy a bigger one, it's never too bad, because um, you have the big air tank, it's a bit more reserved, it's not working that often, um, and I think it's yeah, much more comfortable to work. If you have any kind of question about air compressors, feel free to ask me. I will try to answer them as fast and as honest as possible. Um, I think most people don't have a big workshop. They have a small room in the basement or a garage or something like this. This is the right side for an average compressor that you use for filling up tires inflating mattresses or, or swim rings, um, nail guns, blowing out some parts, um, small works around the car. If you have a big impact wrench, this thing might be a bit too small because an impact wrench needs lots of air. The thing is not only the pressure of a compressor, the thing is the air delivery. Every tool has different needs. So, a nail gun does need really much air, needs a pressure about 6 bars, but uses only 0.6 or 0.7 liters per stroke. A impact wrench needs a pressure also about 6.5 bars, but it needs like 350 liters per minute. So this is much more than a, that a small air compressor like this can do. If you have a too small air compressor and it's running all the time, it's not really healthy for this thing. Um, my old boss told me a piston compressor from 15 minutes that you are working with it, it should be 8 minutes working time, 7 minutes cooling time, roundabout. This is not a real science, but it worked very fine the last 20 years I'm doing this, so keep on your mind, don't choose it too small. If it's running all the time, it will break down. Another question, oil lubricated or a dry runner, oil free, depends what you're doing. If you are doing the common jobs, blowing out stuff, inflating balls, tires, whatever, take a lubricated air compressor because they seem to last longer because they are lubricated. Nothing that runs dry can can have this living time than something that runs uh, lubricated with oil. Exception: your airbrushing. Take a dry runner. Oil-free compressor for airbrushing is always better because oil in your paint job is never good. Um, sure, there are kinds of dryers filters and stuff you can put into your hose but um, they cost money as well so if you're not painting a lot buy yourself an oil-free compressor that's totally okay if you have a really big compressor buy yourself a dryer a real air dryer not only a filter they're air drying devices they're working like an air condition for compressed air they're pulling all the humidity out of the air so you have really dry air and in the end you can put a filtration, depends what you're doing with the air. It's, so, as I say, there's never the wrong compressor, there's only the wrong purpose for this compressor. They're all good. Um, I think the most cheaper brands are produced by the same guys, simply paint different and other stickers sold with a different name, and that's it. They're for sure quite more expensive and better air compressors, but the question is, do you need it? If this thing is running once a month, why to invest a lot of money? It's not necessary. Um, yeah. So, what else to say in the end? Um, I hope you liked the video. I hope I could help you by the decision or with the decision, if you are thinking about to buy an air compressor. If you have any kind of questions, ask me. I'm going really to, to answer it because uh, I think my channel is not that big uh, that I can't answer like five questions. So I'm, I'll do it with pleasure. And um, if you'd like to hear more about air compressors, simply write it into the comments. 
if you don't didn't subscribe my channel subscribe it i'd be happy about it and um yeah have a nice day